And we're on. Happy December. Gorilla Banner Podcast here. In studio, it is I, Brock Washington. Also in studio, we have the ever-illustrious philosophical redneck, Matt Lofton. Say hello, Matt. I don't say, want, I don't, say hello, shy, Matt. I'm shy today. Whatever. Shut up. Okay. And I also have the uh, please pin a medal on my chest, Dylan <laughs> Fraser. <laughs> uh, say hello, Dylan. Hello. Mm-hmm. Hit me right in the ego. Right in. God. Well, I mean, how else am I going to get you to respond? I got a little shy guy over here, and then you were looking like you wanted to be all quiet. No, I was I was going to ask what the fuck kind of intro is. Happy December. It's happy December. He wants you to have a happy December. That's right. It's like, I'm not going to devolve it into happy holidays. Some, somewhere between holidays, Christmas, and just, you know what? Fuck it. The whole month. Kwanzaa. Happy, happy December. <laughs> Kwanzaa. Hanukkah. Christmas. Whatever other Hang on, man. Religions. What the fuck is a Kwanzaa? <laughs> it's an Africanized. No, we don't do that shit here. Winter solstice. Nope. How about rednecks. this? How about this? I got this. Happy winter solstice, everyone. Okay. Mm. Is that what we need to okay. say in Walmart now? <laughs> Let's say that because that's what they're all based off of. <laughs> this is all based off of the fact that the, the shortest, darkest months of the years back in the day needed some sort of getting drunk celebration near family. Because we can't grow our crops. Because we can't grow our <laughs> We're about dead, guys. So we're going to eat our last little bit and hope we and make we're going to drink the month. rest of our ale. <laughs> yeah. Because we haven't figured beer out. I saw the greatest thing today. It was a, um, a retaliation post for Happy Holidays. It was, why are people offended when I say happy holidays? Kind of because for the past few years it's been, ah, oh, why are people offended when I say Merry Christmas? And now all the happy holidays people are saying, oh yeah, well why are you offended when we say happy holidays? Much so, like Can the, you just uh, be fucking happy that I'm blessing you to be happy? People are just slinging shit. Well, I mean, this is what trolls are doing now, right? This is how the troll wins the argument now on the remember, internet. Why are you remember, Matt? Why are you so angry? <laughs> oh, I remember. Why are you so angry that I'm arguing with you? Why are you so angry that I have a counterpoint? I feel like South Park has brilliantly at- attacked the troll persona. Oh, they... Have so you been watching oh, that? They have under- you been watching yeah. that? Yeah. Yes. I've watched every it. episode I'm, I'm still season. a few episodes behind. Don't we won't spoil it. Get on Hulu. They, they, just, they just perfectly capture what trolling is. You piss off person A and then get person B to respond, so C through Z attacks person B and A for, for arguing. And you watch it burn. You know, and it's, then, it's beautiful. And then every letter has another A, B, and then the rest of the alphabet. So it just grows exponentially. And so then they have that little plot twist right now. I'm not trying to ruin it for you about who the real troll is and all that. <laughs> okay, so hang on. Which blew my mind. <laughs> yeah, no shit. So hang on. Like, the way you're saying it is like, so if instead of me saying I think football, stu- football is stupid, I could be like, well... Yeah, the other day I heard Matt say that football was stupid. No, no, and no, no, everybody no, no. attacks Matt. No, 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 quite, no, 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 no. Listen, this is how it works. Your mom's a fat piece of shit, man. And then person B comes back and defends me, or def- I mean, defends you, and says, "No, you don't need to talk to him like that." And then they get called a social justice warrior because they're taking a high pedestal to make themselves appeal as a better person. I really dislike the world. <laughs> and then. <laughs> The people that attack that person are also called horrible people for what they think is siding with the original troll. Meanwhile, the original troll, all they did was push the domino with absolutely it's all, it, no real care. The internet is just a stack of them, and yeah. then they go boop. And it all falls. They're setting. They set the. They set the. They set it on fire. Only to watch it burn. They don't actually really, 90% of the time, even have a stance just in takes, the whole argument. It just takes one comment. Yeah, they just undercut to undercut. It's I just, see those on YouTube just a lot. one down syndrome that's, joke. That's where the they YouTube, came from. The YouTube comments. I believe YouTube is what started allowed trolls? them to burn. Mm, I think the, uh, the forums. I can't believe we're even allowed Talking to still comment. chat rooms back in the yeah, day? Yeah, chat rooms. I think that's where it started. Yes, but they Because didn't. it'd just be one anonymous. As soon as on, on, uh, that Brock, what's the word? Anonymity. Anonymity? Yeah, that one. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> Whew. Wow. I knew the word. I just some of us say do, it. Some of us to go to college it. to get more knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> well, I am in college, and I don't feel like I have very much more knowledge. But anyways. <laughs> <laughs> I quit college. Don't look at me like that. I'm just. I, I quit, might go back. I quit before day. you quit. You never win. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I did. Oh yeah, that's right. That's right. Mm-hmm. One oh, did semester. you finish that semester? 
What? Did you finish that semester? That's two well, semesters, wasn't it? Was like wasn't a it? mix up of it was weird. Did weird you, circumstance. Did you finish any classes? Yeah. I remember you talking to me yeah, about the. Uh, you have an official transcript. Uh, I've never picked it up. I don't. I'm really just saying think you it's have one. It. It's somewhere in the system. I've always been confused about how if you have to go to a different college, you decide to go to a different college. They want your old transcript. They won't ever let you just start anew. It's like you some sort of scheme. To, would you? You'd yeah. Be okay. Let's say let's hours. let's say my life circumstances were some sort of crazy family tragedy happened in my life and I just bombed my very first semester of college. Yeah, you wouldn't want that old one. But you can't. You can't what say, if, eh. What, what if you he, said what he I didn't go to college? Well, this is my th- first then you get bus- Then you get busted on that later. Yeah, yeah. And you then, get expelled for it. Yeah. Literally. Yeah. You get that busted on that ridiculous. for lying to him. It's it like does. Getting, so what's the point and purpose of it? Because that's what you got to really think. What is he's making the money sign, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen? He is rubbing them so fingers. Everybody know that. That's why you have professional students. Mm-hmm. Just student loan after student loan Which until is they're forty. A huge problem with this country's debt. Until they're forty. Gave a man go, like Barry oh, Sanders shit. a whole platform to stand on. Bernie How different Sanders. would that election have been if it was Bernie Sanders instead of Hillary? If the if the Democratic National Convention hadn't have had a massive collusion with the Clinton family in order to put her in charge mm-hmm. with superdelegates. I think Bernie would have won. Cause I he, know tro- so he, many, he polled better against her. I know so many people that voted for Gary Johnson or... Because of the yeah, being yeah, disenfranchised? Because they lost Bernie I just Sanders. wish Gary Johnson wasn't so silly on some of his... That's what made him great, but that's also what made him fall. It made him a person. Yeah. And I, I, I liked it. I, li- I personally liked it because I saw him person. as. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I will, I will never stop laughing at that whole uh, smoking weed gives you an increased risk oh of heart God. attack. Oh, and, oh, and then he falls his over. chest yes. and goes, oh. <laughs> so for, you, for those of you that didn't see it, he was on live television and he was being drilled by this reporter. And she was giving him all these absurd facts about how smoking marijuana increases your chance of having a heart attack. Are and, they and, facts? Yeah. I said absurd. Absurd. But facts. you still said facts. Absurd all right. statistics. All right. So so in the middle of it. But are those before real? she finished. I'm sorry. Keep, continue. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to get back to the absurd statistics. Well, what's, what's, we're not going to let that go, but we're going to get this story. Okay. That, okay. Well, that's a good point. You go ahead. But before, before she even finishes the sentence, he just bug eyes the camera, grabs his chest, and falls on the floor. Things to point out, Gary Johnson does extremely long bike rides, extremely long runs, is an incredible, incredible athlete for his age. Climbed what mountain? Uh, he's climbed uh, Everest, didn't he? I, I want to say it was Everest, but I feel like, hang Did on, let me fact it? check that. Yeah, he definitely has climbed one of the more challenging mountains. I know, he, I know he's one of the practitioners of athletic ability to strengthen his mind. Yes. Which is shown to be true. Absolutely. Now, while he's doing that little fact check on that and the story's been told, absurd statistics. So you can take any set of numbers and any set of data and with enough correlation and, and enough collusion, it. you can skew it. The increased ice cream sales cause more crime? Yeah. That's uh, the famous one. Well, my favorite one is uh, you know, pirates and global warming. The less pirates that have been in this world, the hotter the earth temperature has been. <laughs> so we need more pirates. Yeah. I mean, it's it's fact. When there was more pirates on this planet. There was less global there warming. There was less global warming. So, boom. My favorite one's always been the ice cream one. Yeah. I mean, causality is something you have to take into yeah, effect. Yeah, correlation doesn't. Yeah. And that's what that's one of the reasons why statistics well, kind of steps out of pure math. Well, let's think. Because pot is a blood dilator. Yeah, it there, is. There's things that you can. So would that would that potentially cut, put you at a higher risk? No, while using no. It? Let's let's say that if you're already at a very high risk, it could be the thing that pushes you over the edge. Would it? If you got a lot of plaque, hmm. that'd be about the only situation really I could think of off the top of my head. Dylan. Yes. How long does it take to Google a god dang answer? Well, well, the problem is I'm running into several different articles, and one of them saying that he did the seven summits, and I'm not sure what that means, and so I'm trying to see. And here Matt goes on the computer to show me how. So Matt's going to get some real Googling on. How you trivial. literally just type in, did Gary Johnson climb Mount Everest? And they will tell you yes or no. <laughs> I mean, da-da-da. 
I mean, I, well, I mean, I know that he's cl- he has climbed Everest, but I was curious. Then as, why did you Google it? Because because I'm curious. No, I'm saying I, that's what Google has informed me that he climbed Everest, but I'm seeing other things on the seven summits. Oh yeah, he's a, he's an avid mountain climber, but see, okay, so he's so conquered the tallest one on Earth. Exactly, and I'm wanting to see other what than, other mountains he's climbed. Uh, well, I mean, if he went to Everest, yeah, then I'm sure happen. he went to a lot of other ones. And what is seven summits? Is that like the top seven ones or something? That's yes, what I'm thinking. it's the top seven. It's Everest. Okay, wow, fuck. Okay, I'm not saying these. <laughs> Why is it that some of the hardest mountains you cannot pronounce? Like I'm not even gonna try this one, but it's Everest, something that starts with an A, and perhaps says I don't know. And then Denali, Kilimanjaro, Elbrus, Vinson. Did he climb Karstens. all those, or is he in pursuit of climbing all those? Is that a goal I of I his? Didn't, I didn't ask Google well, that question. Well, why don't you ask Google that? I mean, we're talking about a former CEO question. of a company. I mean, it's not like money was ever a big issue in Isn't his life. Isn't that so, so aggravating? <laughs> But a down-to-earth guy. Did Gary yes, Johnson have a stroke? <laughs> <laughs> On my TV, yes, he did. That uh, that Aleppo incident of his, <laughs> not knowing what Aleppo was, yeah. Oh. That was one of his me? biggest botches. Yeah, that was pretty funny. It, it, that one was just funny to watch. Yeah. He knew it. He I'm just, not, whoops. I'm not going to I'm not gonna hate on him for that because you're talking about such a vast library of knowledge of everything happening in the world at once it's you can't expect all, all of it you that, can't expect one guy to know it all that's micro that's micromanaging this is the very so reason the why degree. yeah it's the very reason why presidential debates are completely useless just about because the 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 jumping of of questions and stuff from one point to the other these people aren't even allowed to give a real answer in two minutes give your response two minutes you want me to give you a response in two minutes for something that requires three books worth of knowledge? Get out of here. You know? Okay, well, I'm not going to... Hmm. Did you give up? Yeah, I'm about to. Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. Either gonna, way. It, I, I'm going to have to because it's given me this stupid eight things to know about Gary Johnson. <laughs> you can't get away from it? Hey, you know what, though? You know, what was it? The 13 memorable, memorable quotes? Memorable. Wow. I just pulled a, I just pulled a Lofton. You did. <laughs> memorable quotes me. by, uh, you know, Mad Dog Mattis. I'm pleading with you with tears in my eyes. That's right. If you fuck with me, I'll kill you all. That's our Secretary of Defense. Well, I Secretary feel of a- War, we can call it that again. <laughs> Secretary of <laughs> Offense. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just it, telling you. I feel, position- I feel defended. The <laughs> <laughs> right. What was like, that? Uh, peaceful offensive. That was like that was the term in the 1990s, right? <laughs> We're gonna have a peaceful offensive exercise. What do you mean a peaceful peaceful offensive? What does Did that you even say mean? Peaceful. Peaceful. I don't know. Rewind the tape. Matt Who Lofton. Cares? Matt Lofton. You're rubbing off on me. <laughs> I'm running on just a few hours. Of That's kind of nasty. Mm-hmm. Me too. It's very hard. Who needs sleep? Apparently not me and Dylan. <laughs> right? Apparently we do, actually, because I can't even say <laughs> yeah, that that's, word. If anything, this is this is a Sound like Nemo example trying to say anemone. 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 For all of our Disney fans, we are avid Disney watchers. I'm not an avid no, Disney Matt watcher. Matt loves Disney. He's I'm dating an with... avid Disney watcher. Shout out to Brittany. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I had to watch Finding Dory. It was actually nowhere near as good as Finding Nemo. Like not even close. Are we gonna do a movie review on it? No, no I'm just. You know, I will. I will say out. I like the seals or whatever the fuck they. Give were. me four things you didn't like about it. It was about Dory. The plot was convenient. You didn't like it because the plot was convenient. Excess. Well, not the not the plot was convenient. Every circumstance, and I know that's the way Disney movies are set up to be. I mean, they always have a way out, and there there's never a complete corner. But this one was just. Far too convenient. I mean, we're talking about aquariums that were lined up in the middle of the road for no reason. I wish your parents were dead. Ah, that that actually would have made it a really a two a two year olds need that. You know what? I agree with Matt, and that's and that's kind of as, as fucked up as that sounds. Two year olds need that. Bambi's mom died, or dad died, whatever. Get over it. Well, you know, it's not till age ten. I mean, left to children's own devices, age ten is about the point to where you start construing the idea of death as something that will happen to you apparently that the average is right around nine or ten i remember it being much earlier than that whenever i had my existential crisis i was 
I'm still having my existential crisis. Well, I mean, what are you never, talking no, about? From the moment it starts, it never stops. <laughs> sure it does. I was about to say, you're a fucking nihilist, too. <laughs> it can stop. No, I'm not. Yeah, you are. Yeah, you. No. He doesn't realize how much of one I've made him. He doesn't even understand. You've me. hit me up at three in the morning. <laughs> hey, let's not And I not take get blame personal. for this because, you know, in some ways I introduced him to, to Nietzsche and, and, and all the branches He would have found it eventually, of but, but he'll, he, he's, he's messaged me before on Facebook uh, going, dude, does it all matter? Yeah, because look, well, look. Here's the thing. What's the I point? Mean, when I first met Dylan, here's here's what I had. I had a a, a a veneer of happiness. Super motivated athlete. Super motivated happiness, With and I'm direction. saying veneer of happiness, deeply rooted in in Eastern mysticism and and trying to find his way of Zen and flow. It's and still there, science. still working on that, right? But, yeah, that never stopped. Yeah, but man, he was running from that. Uh, <laughs> he was running from all them dark, deep things in his head. Sometimes so, was running. Yeah, you were, you're still running, okay. but but now you stand and face. Is that him why you do marathons? Us, you send us all. <laughs> <through. Yes. laughs> Run away from it all. Speaking of marathons, I need a break from running. My knee is killing me. Your knee? Yeah, this was before the heel hook, so. Yeah. I think. All heel hooks matter. Oh, don't even get me started. Speaking of. I have a theory. Never mind. Speaking of heel hooks, Johnny Bones Jones, Dan Henderson, any minute I will be getting a live update on what happened. Let's go ahead and place our bets. Brock. John Jones. John Jones. How long is the match? Uh, You know what? I don't even know that. I should probably gather these facts before I start trying to. Yeah. I mean. Does it matter? Yes. <laughs> You're absolutely right. I'm going to say John Jones because of his, even though he's fairly new to jiu-jitsu, he is a freak athlete. Has tapped out several Brazilian jiu-jitsu black belts. Yes. Vitor Belfort. He's a freak athlete. He's a very good wrestler, and even though it's not jiu-jitsu, it is some sort of ground awareness. He will not tap to broken bones. He's proven this with Vitor Belfort. And it's just... And he's on, and with that same, because whenever he trains, he is very motivated. And he, if he comes at the jujitsu training with the same ferocity, I have, I mean, it, I have no idea how good he is, but I just don't think Dan Henderson at his age is going to be able to handle it. Right. Though Henderson has to be ro- like rolling with a brick house. On the same token, he's, so we're talking about a 10, 15 minute round. I see. It just drawing. Yeah. Well, if it's submission only, are we going to be here all night? We'll be there for it's a not while. Submission only, they're doing no, it. No, it's it's flow grappling, so yeah, it, it has so to have an 10. end. Isn't it's, that a ten? Submission Underground is the name of the organization. Flow mm. grappling. Oh, the, so Submission oh. Underground does EBI rules, if I'm not mistaken. Is that Chill Sonnens? That's Chill Sonnens. Oh, he does EBI. Yeah. He did, he okay, so EBI they're going to do the. So they're just going to go out until a draw, then, and if it comes to that, so, then they do the negative position. Bullshit. Then I actually choose uh, Benson. Dan? Not Dan. I actually Henderson? Ju- Sorry, the Hendersons. Yeah, Henderson, Benson. I Just guess. like Silva's. Yeah. Antonio. And- For eight <laughs> minutes, a competitor can win only by scoring a submission. If there are no submissions. The match moves on to overtime period. Yeah. And we EBI all know. Rules. Yeah, I'll, I actually like EBI. So, yeah, a, little, a quick overview of EBI rules. It's 10 minutes. Eight. Eight? Yes. Eight. Eight minutes grappling, trying to go for a submission. If neither one gets it, then you get – the chance to be in a position of dominance. According to the winner of a coin flip. According to the winner of a coin flip. And you are going to try to submit the guy from that position. If he escapes the position, then you switch. The, the, as in, uh, the guy that was in the dominant position gets in the submissive position. And if he escapes, then it's whoever has the quickest time escape. Now, aren't right. the, aren't no, the no, positions... No, no, no. It goes again, doesn't it? I think, yeah, twice yeah. over. Yeah, you go twice this is over. Until yeah, you go twice, and whoever... They count it up, and whoever has the yeah. least amount of time to escape wins. That's if there was no submission. And right. That's but only if there if was a no submission, submission, and the other guy doesn't get a submission, then you win. But if the other guy does have right. a submission, then it goes down to the time. Yeah. And that's why I say Henderson. Extremely I explosive. Don't... Mm-hmm. Hard to arm lock. I arm imagine. to arm lock. We'll we'll throw. His, I can see him very much throwing his arm or something out there. I don't even know if his there. neck is see, chokeable. Have you seen? Uh, right, that's what I'm saying. I can see him escaping Jones quicker than Jones escaping him when it comes to like because I can see him taking the back and just seat belting that and just riding it. Mm. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Jones has some long arms, too. Vitor's already shown, like, he's not, oh, yeah, hard, he's not hard to arm lock. Yeah, but but here's the thing. That first time that you take that dude's back, don't worry about submitting him for the first 30 seconds. Just run the clock. Just be an American backpack. Yep. I say, I say that like John Jones is an American. I feel like Dan Henderson's more of a representation of America. I don't know, man. John Jones likes to snort coke and party. <laughs> <laughs> hey, used yeah, to. I think they both to. showed the two different types of Americans. Speaking of Americans, one with all the gifts and talents. Are you about to say Tim Kennedy? Tim Kennedy. <laughs> ah, that hurt. That hurts so bad. It's been as too a, long. It's too a, long. You can't. You can't a, go in there with a gifted striker. And I know you don't like him. No. You know, who Kevin Gaslam? Yeah. Kevin Gaslam. Kelvin or Kevin? I don't Kelvin. know. I think it's Kelvin. Yeah, because he's a temperature measurement that's astronomical. <laughs> um, he's hot. You can't, you know, give someone that I mean, he is a talented striker. Talented. Yes. And even with the weight issues, you can't put him up against somebody who's rusty as hell. The one thing you can appreciate as as a martial artist is you've got Bubblegum, Kelvin Gaslam, and then you've got <laughs> Tim Kennedy. Matt's just losing it over here. Tim <laughs> Kennedy, who is just absolutely shredded and if he wasn't stringently tested by usada on a on a constant basis you'd swear to everything you know that he's taking steroids well, look at his background first well yeah army special forces super discipline yeah that's a but I'm, different type of i'm athlete. not gonna that's say that mentality u.s soldiers don't use steroids yeah because, i'm not gonna say that either i'm not saying that myself i'm just saying that that body he has is entirely possible with his lifestyle well what i would say is that he proved that his body can hold up to extreme duress for extreme periods of time and not break but his body doesn't hold as well as doho choice well hang on let me finish (laughs) let me finish let me finish where i was going is is you got bubble gum and then you got the epitome of a superhero physique Mm -hmm. probably like Point Great four God. body fat, just shredded ultimate muscle man. Looks like he just eat Kelvin and it'd be over. But man, that is not the case. Martial arts is not about. He did appearance. very now. He did very well with Gaslam as For long as he was operating. Minutes. No, as long as he was operating on all the way out or all the way in, he did pretty well. What, and I was amazed. That well, I mean, how do you do well, well all the way down. out? Do what? How do you do well all the way out? He was keeping him just the distance management he was able to maintain against well, such I mean, a that, high level striker. But that's okay against anyone as long as you're away from someone. But he, like reach. But he kept it even on Kelvin's attempts to close it and keep him in the range. Not after that first round, though. No, it just sucks to me because he would have destroyed Rashad Evans. You know, and then I agree that would have been a great ability though for him to break back into. Getting another fight and da 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 da. Yeah. Instead, he got fed the guy who had the capability to t- put him away. It's a bad matchup for him. It, it was, was a bad matchup, especially considering he was rusty. Now, if he was in stride, good to go. What is there's no such. I mean, it depends on who you talk to, though. Dominic Cruz doesn't believe in ring rust. Dominic it's Cruz absolutely real. is a mental sharpshooter. And by the way, he's the one that can play all the way out. <laughs> well, all the way out, but I mean, when I said that, it's just like Tim Kennedy. If you say he was successful from the outside, he wasn't accomplishing anything from the outside. I don't count that as successful. Dominic's success from the outside is the fact that he come in quick enough to get back out. Yeah. Tim. Tim was either all the way away from Kevin, or he was trying to wrestle. But being him. able to avoid the damage from the striker is what he was doing on the outside until he could close the gap and maintain yeah. that but, clinch, but if which he, is the only time he did any of his damage. Yeah, it was from the clinch. He and didn't do it anywhere else, which is what I'm talking about. Yeah. His preferable game was in the clinch. That's where, he, that's where he needed to be, but that doesn't work well with Kelvin Gaslam because you're not going to keep him there that long. Beautiful. Beautiful oh, kick ability. Beautiful I, th- kick I, think, ability. I think someone with good, what is it? Beautiful kick ability. Who? Gaslin. He didn't show too much of his He didn't kick. show it, but I'm telling you right now that Tim he, Kennedy had to go to the drawing board and prepare what for he it. Really put, what he really showed was his exceptional boxing. Correct. Just the awareness think, of the limbs. I don't think it's fair like to, to base Kelvin's performance off of Tim's because as much as I'm a fan of Tim Kennedy for everything he does, he... 
he fought just like a like amateur. I mean, head down, ducked all the way down, and swinging overhand rights. He was exhausted. Right. It was. It was. I don't understand. Adrenaline either. dump, man. Do you think? It and was? that's why I'm saying ring rust, because you got somebody like Dominic Cruz who is a stoic. Okay, Dominic Cruz is the definition of a guy who is clear minded as much as you possibly can be throughout mm-hmm. a whole fight. And then you got somebody like Tim Kennedy who has learned to live in the chaos yeah, due well, to his occupations and things like that. But that doesn't mean that he doesn't need to be in that chaos constantly to not feel that groove. That's what I don't understand is this is we're, we're talking about habit. we're talking about a special forces soldier who's in firefights constantly. It's How much of more of an adrenaline dump could I mean Tim's talked about stepping in the cage before and how much of a nonchalant like sure or do you think how much of that do you think is boastful uh we'll say 60 percent. 60 percent. i don't know I, I think it's because i think he's i think he's gotten used to that that pop of adrenaline but at the same time if you haven't experienced that adrenaline in six months and then you got delayed off a fight and delayed off a fight he also managed to hit kelvin gaslam a couple of times and it, you saw him kind of explode yeah well, you know, it's, so I think that might have been the adrenaline pump. Like, oh, I hit him. I can finish this right here. And it was like, come in, and he just kind of forgot was, the veteran rule. I was sitting with a buddy of mine in Buffalo Wild Wings during that fight, and we're talking. This is like in the third round, whenever Tim's at his worst. Right, like, he's, he's just swinging up. the wild it's hands. Like, what if he just catches Kelvin with with the overhand right? What if, and then it's all over. That'd be the greatest thing ever. And then, boom, he hits him with a huge right, and then a huge left. Knocks Kelvin's head left and then right. Kelvin hits up against the cage, and then looks fine. And it was like, oh shit, that was <laughs> that was our chance. And you're all, you can also see the age mm-hmm. advantages and disadvantages with those two. Yeah, right. And that's ability, what I was saying about ability, miles on the body. Right, the ability to take damage and recover. Well, I think Doho Choi. I think that was a big thing for him tonight. I think it he probably was. lost. He probably lost three years off his career. Absolutely, <laughs> it wasn't off his career. Beating. It was off his life. <laughs> I mean, I mean uh, that chuckle beating. about it all you want. That's exactly what you it watch. Is what you watch. We watch year, someone two year, three years off, and that, it's like it's incredible to watch. It's an insane thing to watch. Those weren't just hard hits. Yeah, those were still the he safest was hooking, sport. He was trying, like Cub Swanson was trying to hook Choi's head through the fucking cage and out of the building. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I think if Cub would have got hit with that same amount. Oh, He'd have been down. Oh, yeah, Cub, absolutely. Yeah. He would have be been down. There's because no way. the few times that Choi really hit Cub, Cub was really hurting, and like Cub really had to throw everything in the sink. Cub got rocked a lot. Yeah, almost with every straight shot that went down. I was impressed by Choi because you have Cub, who's not this clean, straight cut sort of striker. Mm-hmm. He's more of your unpredictable, unorthodox yeah. type. You yeah, know, he comes at you he, a little while. He might he might throw a jab and then just. A fucking left uppercut. I mean, it's just weird shit he'll do. Yeah, one four. What? Yeah, it's no one two and come back. It's none of that. It's not just a fucking two hit combo. And then you have Choi, who's coming in. And he he's just doing very basic, just jab straight. I would. I I don't know if I'd say basic. Like basic for that. Tra- he 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 brought he's a traditionalist. The tra- he brought the traditional oh, martial yeah. arts style back into it. Yeah, you're right. And it was really cool to see that. Because it was obvious, uh, Taekwondo, right? Isn't that what he does? No, he's not a Taekwondo. He, what is he? No. Uh, Let me see. I don't know what he is. I want to say it's a form of karate. Anyways, he does the really wide stance with the leg dexterity, mm-hmm. which is what I noticed with him. But he didn't use his feet that much. Really? Yeah. He just kind of used... He hadn't in his past few fights that I've seen, really. He kind of uses a sniper kids. fist. Well, he's built for that. He's long. He is. He does he's, have he's very He's got that long same arms, kind of wonder boy lanky. build. Kind of lanky, but still very lean. Mm-hmm. And he's got this snap on that straight. It's just vicious. Yeah, it comes from the shoulder. It's just <laughs> like a like a fucking whip. He's just wham. Mm-hmm. But it, anyways, he's just super technical. It's just this clean cut, you know, just very fast viper like strikes he throws. All I'm getting is Korean boxing. Really? Mm-hmm. Korean boxing. Well, maybe there you go. I mean, he doesn't really throw that many kicks. Which Korea would be taekwondo he's lost twice his yeah. last loss was in 2010 yeah he's he's he can't even take nothing away from losing to cub swanson is like he um and almost putting him down several times yeah and, and his ability to 
his ability to take damage like that was ridiculous. Well, he's also really young. Uh, Dylan, I've seen a lot of really young guys you fight. Like Choi? Yes. Well, I've seen a lot of really young guys fight and take damage, but none of them like that. Have you ever seen that? No, but I also haven't seen Cub be much of a knockout guy, has he? I mean, in the past. Well, he has power. That has yeah. to be respected. It he usually ends up knockout guy or not. If if I'm if, if even if it's someone that doesn't know martial arts, if they just hold you against the cage and just start punching yeah, you. Yeah, you're right. You're right. That's essentially what Cobb Swanson did. Was he would push him, bam, push him, bam. It was just right hand, right hand, right hand. It was like, what the fuck? Just go down, dude, please. I was sitting there just going, stop, just stop, please. <laughs> I loved it. That was the best Ouchies. fight on the card. Like he, it, 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 Mark, I thought I'm his, telling you, you missed something magical. You really, I thought his brain was about to just slide out of his fucking ear. I swear to God, it was <laughs> just ridiculous. What I, what I was most impressed with was after Doho Choi would get hurt or rocked or whatever, it would be about three seconds of his mouth open a little bit, and then it's like a switch would click, and, and then he'd composed go right back to his little his little legs open wide stance, and then right composed hand, again. Right hand just sitting in the pocket, and I was. How do you pull your composure together like that? Muscle memory. He must have been doing that since he was just two years he old. He didn't get caught He up. just walks to school just doing that pose. Yeah. Well, I, think, <laughs> I think American... Teacher slapping Western, him with a stick every time he was out of stance. Exactly. Whack. Well, like the Western concept is like like Eddie Alvarez. Oh, somebody hit me. Get caught up in your emotions. Start oh, yeah. swinging. Or even Cub. Like when our Cub would get hit. Cub would just start going nuts. Just get mad, bite He's down on the mouth guard, and just fucking well on. Let's just call it machoism because yeah. it exists in Brazilians. It exists in Americans. That's the West. But then you look at the East and, and Doho Choi, is every time he got hurt, but there was no Khabib there was no posturing. There's something has to, the same thing. There's something to brag on with he the whole. He doesn't mind taking the punch and composing. Yeah, there's something to brag on with the whole, I'm just going to bite down on my mouth guard and just Hit sure, this motherfucker. Sure. I mean, it's what makes Diego Sanchez so scary come round three. I mean, it's absolutely like Still it, to this day. Whenever you, <laughs> Matt Brown. Yeah. Matt Brown, the same thing. Because you beat Matt Brown to a bloody pulp, but come round three, he's still going to be standing out there. Hang on. You know, what I, you know what I think lost Matt Brown that fight? The hug he gave Donald Cerrone in round in Made round three. Made him upset. No, 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 no. I think because you think he lost his ferocity. I, I know. I think Donald I think, Cerrone gained his confidence. Yeah. I think it was definitely the Cerrone head kick that put him down. <laughs> <laughs> well, he ate head kicks what throughout I, the whole thing. Yeah. No, yeah. that one no, was that a special one. one. That one was special. But that, what I'm that saying was is the Cerrone special. It, to me, it looked like Deroni. Cowboy was a, Cerrone. Cowboy whatever. was a little uneasy for those first two rounds. Like he was uncomfortable. In, in an actual fight. But then as soon as Matt Brown smiles at him and he smiles back and they're like, okay, we're cool again. It's like then Cowboy kind of got in his rhythm. Not mm. that he wasn't kicking the shit out of Matt Brown before. Well, you know, the the thing I'll never forget about Don Cerrone is watching Diaz break him mentally before yes, the fight. that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, he it is possible. It is possible to do to Donald Cerrone. But it either takes Donald Cerrone doing it to himself or a Diaz that just crawls in your mind and just Matt should have worked flips, harder. That yeah, damn it, <laughs> flips pancakes around is like the, turns your brain into something grilled. Is there anyone scrambled. that's about to punk a Diaz? Uh, it's not possible to punk them. I don't think it is either. <laughs> because they're because where they stand philosophically from the very beginning it's is such you, a homie. yeah such a hard <laughs> shell that you can't even really approach it until they're already flipping you off. It's like They've I, already put you on the yeah. Defense. By the time you go, I'm gonna whoop you. As soon as you say I'm gonna whoop, it's fuck you, homie. Yeah, I mean that's what I'm saying. So two oh nine. What? Yeah, their their philosophical stance in of itself almost safeguards them the whole time through. <laughs> And then it's two brothers. Are you serious? Really? It's always two brothers, though. It not that weird? Mm-hmm. Well, at least two. You know, like yeah, John Jones, stuff like that. Yeah, it beating up each other throughout the whole Chris Wildman growing up thing. Yeah, it it makes some it it creates something special. It creates a a, a different kind of man. It's always a little brother. That little brother syndrome. Yeah. Yeah, and Johnny Jones is is a little brother syndrome. Exactly. His his brother is a monster. Yeah, football players. Have you ever seen? Oh yeah, they're okay. Huge. They're football players. He's, yeah, they make John Jones look like a fucking. Yeah, and they constantly make jokes runt. about how they beat up on him and yeah. stuff. They still talk about how they whoop his ass. Yeah, he don't say anything either. No, no he doesn't because <laughs> <laughs> he knows better at Thanksgiving. <laughs> That's right. 
I'll still whoop your ass, bro. Yeah. You know what? Even if even if they can't, or even if they say they can, I think like knowing him being the superior fighter, he could obviously win in a fight. But there's like that little mental, mm-hmm. that that little mental like twisting. It's like he's always been the beta in the group of his brothers, so he'll never like really posture up. Yeah, and I mean, but I think that's what gives him the ability to be the the railroad spike or the sledgehammer. Do you two get annoyed whenever you get around beta males? Hmm. Do beta males ever annoy you? I mean, how beta male are you talking? I'm talking about definition of beta. I don't know. I mean, because I can't say that I run into a lot of them. Mm -mm. I ran into a few. You know, you'll run into them in colleges. (laughs) Matt's like, I go to college. Yeah, yeah. I'm just, I'm shaking my head. Yeah, Yeah. shaking his head. Yeah, but I mean, in day to day life, they 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 don't make it. They don't exist. They want to tax the one percent. Yeah, they're very much so. That's I mean, I'm serious. You talk to anyone that protests on taxing the one percent, and just look at them menacingly. Just what see what they what if, do. What if they're all just really not beta males? What if they're alpha males that want an easier way to get chicks than fight? Like, let me just pretend I really stand for women rights. Guys are such pigs. It's like, oh, you think guys are pigs too? He's like, yeah. <laughs> No, that's the fox. That's the fox? Mm. There's the alpha male, the beta male, and then the fox. I think there's a lot more foxes than there are beta males. <laughs> You'll meet some real, like, you need, just go to Tech Campus, and trust me, you will see a couple of beta males. Do they believe that? They have to. Look, there are people that cannot follow this simple line of logic. And here, and here's... It's not that I totally buy into trickle-down economics, but here we go. Trickle-down economics. Who employs all the people in this country? The top 1%. Who do we tax the most? The top 1%. Okay, so what if we just ease their taxes? They'll invest more money in their company, right? There are people that go, absolutely not. But no matter what you say, they will invest some of it. We're not trying to get them to invest all of it on the tax break. Just some of it. Do you need $4 trillion? Yes. Do you need that? That's not yours. You need to share that with everyone, man. It's mine. You need to share that. It's mine. No, I need it. I, I, need, took, to go, I need to go to college for free. I took my club and I smashed <laughs> my way until it was all mine. No, man. You if you start. want it, <laughs> you get your club and you come at me, bro. You need to work for it. That's what, That's how I feel. Why are you? Why do you feel? I, I don't understand a, their mindset. That's what makes you an evil conservative. Yeah, I know. By the well, way. I'm not a conservative either. Don't label me no, as no, that. No, that's what makes you a conservative. <laughs> We're not talking oh, about... Oh, you're talking about in the eyes of them? Yeah. 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 It's not even about being left or right on the compass anymore at that point. It's it, just even, because you feel like every man for himself. I feel as though... They worked for it, and they got. Even if they didn't work for it, even if it was inherited, luck just fucking hit them. If it was inherited, or if they just made the right call whenever they invested in stocks, it doesn't matter. Yep, it came down to them. It's like, oh look at the fortune I have. This is awesome. I love life. Sure, I I got this. I worked for this. That doesn't mean that you're entitled to what they own. Yeah, I mean, I mean that's the whole point of owning something. If you're going to share everything, then then what's the point of even doing anything? So, as far as we can tell, the history of taxes, the first time taxes were ever introduced in society, was the Egyptians. Mm -hmm. And it was that they would tax the farmers in order to... For public use. In order to maintain the aquifers. Mm -hmm. They would hire a man, or two, or however many it took, to maintain the water supply because it took pretty big infrastructure in order for that to occur. So that's where taxes started. And if that's what my taxes are doing, my taxes are going directly to infrastructure and defense. That's what they still go to largely. Largely. But now, and ooh, the national defense argument. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. 
What's that? That we have enough? <laughs> that we have too much. People just think we have too much. The reason we're the hegemonic state of the world is because we have too much. Now sit down and shut the fuck up. Yeah. By the way, you live in a country that can't be taken now. I mean, it's cool, but you can't just sit on your haunches and it stay that way. The reason we maintain such a very expensive Navy is no one can get to us, bro. But that costs money. Our Navy prevents other navies from even existing. Exactly. From Russia. Even... Russia finally made an aircraft carrier, and have you seen it? It sucks. It's just this malfunctioning, huge piece of shit. And Japan can never build a supercarrier again, even though they made some monstrosities. In World They're War not II. allowed. They're not allowed. Well, Still to this day, to. they don't want to anymore. Yeah, they refuse to. They don't even want. They. I don't even think they're. They want to militarize for offensive capability. I think no, it's all for defensive. defensive. Yeah. yeah, well, that Same was part of Germany. That's Japanese defense force. Yes, the Japanese yeah. defense force ground and Japanese defense force air. They don't have Japanese defense force water. No, they do not. <laughs> Even though they are, we are completely, Japanese defense force water. That's what it was. What we was talking about. Yeah, you cannot get to us via water, and so if you can't get to us via water, you know, get to us, bro. Because <laughs> what about air, man? You can't get there. <laughs> Our air superiority, by the way, is still crazy. What's that really, really far off light with smoke behind it? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, and... Oh, shit, it's getting bigger. And I understand the thought and idea of, well, if we're just such a big monster, no one's going to pick on us anyway, so let's just... China will one day. Yeah, they're going to. That's what they're doing right it now. Might, it might be a peaceful transition, actually, to be fair. Not as long as there are people like Trump in this world. I bet it would be because Trump and Putin together hate China. Both of them hate China. Mm -hmm. You think China? Because even, even China. if China becomes a hegemonic state, they did cause global warming single-handedly. <laughs> yeah. By the way, the U.S. had very little to do with it. We jumped out of the carbon game way before, and the coal that we put out. You can use the word clean coal. I know that's going to make some people's eyes roll, but it's still a fourth of the carbon emission that coal is being used. And by the way, we're largely a coal state. This is, this is my challenge. This is my so challenge like to the Let's people of the U.S. It. Walk out your front door, hold your hand in front of your face, and if you can clearly see your fingers, <laughs> you're in the United States. Yes. <laughs> but if you can't, you are probably in China. <laughs> How many Definitely fingers am Beijing. I holding up? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's it's... Everybody jokes about it, but you no, it's horrible. About anybody you can walk around with it. a vacuum and make a brick. Yeah, well, there's that, and everybody there has to wear a mask mm -hmm. whenever you walk around. That's a cultural norm to wear a face mask. So, you know, going I thought back, they were just all surgeons. No, <laughs> no. So going back to it, national defense. You know, it, that whole posturing. I mean, we keep it that way. Fuck you, my water. Well, I mean, yeah. It, we keep it that way. That way the scales can never be tipped again. And I don't know that people even understand, and I'm not even sure if I made it clear in that statement, no one can catch up, bro. Because we will not let them. We won't let them. And it, But if all it takes I have a, is one time not being the person to make the technological breakthrough. I want a crackpot. I, I have oh, a crackpot yeah. theory about how to stabilize the Middle East. Oh, gosh. It's a crackpot theory. Go shoot. <laughs> okay. I want Iran to... to I want us to let Iran have nukes. Okay. Because Iran and Pakistan hate each other. And what do oh, what do they're gonna what do nuclear states? No, 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 no. Okay. Well, <laughs> if you, they are you saying mad? <laughs> yes. Are you giving me yes. a mad? Scenario? Mutually assured destruction. It is. It's honestly since nuclear bombs have been made, the it's the what tension keeps the world at bay. Yes. There's been no actual major superpower wars fought since nuclear bombs have been made. But poor little Georgia still got ran over. By the way, that's a country right next to Russia. Yeah, right. but just because you have nuclear device doesn't mean you have capability of launching said device. That's true. Which is what their problem was. By the way, you know the interesting thing about watching uh, Georgia being invaded by Russia was proof that Russia still holds on to its 1980s military tactics. Mm -hmm. like, verbatim, by the book. The same thing that we thought they would do in the 1980s coming through the gap. Which, I mean, coming from... If you don't know what the gap is, go grab a military history book and read about the Cold War, you moron. 
But anyways. <clears throat> but anyway. So it's funny you say that because we've completely lost ours. I don't feel like our soldiers are prepared to fight any war. We never war. had it. Okay. Have you ever read the quote by the Russian general about Americans fighting in war? Oh, yes. Because mm. You can't that? predict what they do because they don't even know what they're going to do. I'm gonna give. I'm gonna pull up the direct quote. That that's that's pretty close. It's pretty close, but <laughs> but go ahead with your point. Oh, uh, I think that nuclear armament of Iran would lead to a stalemate with Pakistan, and in turn, <laughs> since India also has them, Turkey would end up getting them, and then I forget the other one. Anyways, another one would get them. Anyways, I think the proliferation of nuclear weapons, as long as they are in the hands of somewhat rational leaders that do not want to kill themselves. Mm-hmm would actually stabilize the whole Middle East. And here's another thing. Whenever people say that uh, we're stopping Germany and Japan from getting nukes, especially Japan, if they wanted them, they'd fucking make them. Hello. They do really well with their reactors. They know how to refine it. But that's just the thing that gets me is people talking about, well, they would never do that. They don't do that because they choose not to have that target on them. Mm Mm-hmm. Ah, what is it? A serious problem in planning against American doctrine is that the Americans do not read their manuals. <laughs> Wait, is that the direct quote? That's uh, that was one direct quote. Okay, that wasn't the one I remember. Yeah. The reason the U.S. Navy does so well in wartime is that war is chaos, and the U.S. Navy practices chaos on a daily basis. That's not basis. the one either. That's another one. Yeah, but but they're, they're all they, they all they all mean the same thing. Mm-hmm. It's funny because so much of this sounds like, like, it's almost like someone would pretend that was a quote that Russia said. So, is there something to say about dysfunctionality as, in war? A serious problem in planning right? against American doctrine is that the Americans do not read their manuals, nor do they feel any obligation to follow their doctrine. Anyways, throughout history, we've 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 had that stigma about us in that. When it comes time for fog of war, there's always some lieutenant or captain on the ground that goes, all right, boys, because that's about what Storm I think he does. Yeah. Storm yeah. the Norman's a great example. Yes, great example. Threw the book right out the window. Only get him out of Baghdad. Go to Iraq. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> Clean right through it. Go right through it. All right. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it's hard to practice chaos, but... But look, me and the I, Dylan, we practice chaos pretty often. Very often. Yeah. Who was the general in the Korean War that was about to push their ass all the way through China? Say it again. Who was the general in the Korean War that was about to push the American forces all the way into China? Oh, I don't know. I can't remember who that was. It wasn't Ho Chi Minh. Was it? No. Mm-hmm. That was just the head general. Yeah. Oh, you ha- you still haven't read uh, fighting the. Uh, Finding the Jackal. or mm, I've been reading Hunt, Storm of Steel, which Hunting is amazing. What would I say the name of the book was? Uh, Hunting, Hunting the, the Jackal. Jackal. Yeah, it's Hunting the Jackal. Great book. Yeah. I need to let you read Storm of Steel. It's ridiculous. Yeah. But, I mean, that guy right there, just to, you know, to be a Green Beret before really Green Berets existed, I mean, he was like one of the first. Does he remove himself from the situations? Like, remove the personality. He leaves a little bit of it, but it, there's times that he's clinical in what he explains. Like when he's talking about uh, we were marching, and all of a sudden, or me and my buddy was, was running through the forest, essentially what they were doing, we're running through the forest, and we come upon a, a accidentally stumble upon a you know Vietnam camp in Cambodia. Literally says we're in Cambodia, and we stumble upon Viet Cong. And if that doesn't have any significance to you, once again, pick up a military history book, you moron. And it was like, oh, so we just kind of kept trotting by, but we threw grenades in the shack and kept going. (laughs) You know? (laughs) And by the way, he did detail that the people were asleep. Right. But yeah, when he explained those, those are kind of clinical. When he's explaining his eighth purple heart, it's a little clinical. Well, what I realized with Ernst Lunger, which is... He was a German officer in World War One, talking about the French. Whenever he, they were battling the French, he was talking about the artillery volleys that they put on them, in which 
piece of shrapnel goes through his leg, and he literally the uh, the actual words he used was, "My leg stopped working, and I look down and I am bleeding profusely, mm-hmm. and that's it. Like there wasn't any. I felt a sharp pain. It was just, oh." Right, it's not but, moving but, like I like I need it to. But right then now. go back and and look at Anderson Silva when he broke his leg against you know in the, in the fight with I uh, hate Chris. that video. Please, please. But I'm just please, saying, like, please, go please, back and look please. at his face. Don't look at what the spinning leg. <laughs> look at his face. I can't. I just look at the. He leg. doesn't know. He doesn't know. It hasn't registered yet. Mm-hmm. He literally tries to step back on the foot and it folds. And replant. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It folds. So you see, what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Now imagine just intensify that just a little bit more, amp it up two more notches in, in the middle of a war. Yeah, but I I just wonder does the, the human emotion, brain does it on purpose? Why? Well, that's does, that's exactly what I was gonna say. Does the emotion leave them during that moment? It's not or is that it the emotion's the gone. It's that it's so awash that yeah, it's but, all of them flooding all at once. Right, so but it's, it's just like, one just. I want. I, 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 I so like you think it's think. just an overstimulant. Yeah, so that when you go to recall it, because. You are a biochemical memory device uh-huh. that when it goes to try to recall that and it tries to ping into that, it can't give you back all those chemicals all at one time right. to truly recall it. So all you get left in the memory, and this, you know, from what I what I felt feel about it, <laughs> I don't know any other way to say that. From what I Thanks. understand about it myself and in, in my experience is that. Yeah, you, you, you're you the first, yeah. You just can't really ping it. You can remember going, Wah-ha-ha! but that's about it. Well, you know, it's interesting because when I was about 14, I gashed the bottom of my foot open on a tree, on a small tree that someone cut in half mm-hmm. and left the spike, and I was running full sprint down a hill, and I stepped on it, and I I thought I'd stepped on it, and I was like, ow, that kind of hurt, and I kept running. I ended up having 13 stitches. By the time I stopped running at the bottom of the hill, I looked down, there's just blood everywhere, stuff hanging out of my foot. But there was no pain at all right there. Mm-hmm. There was there was no pain, and it wasn't until I would sat down. And it's not like I stepped on it, and there was this huge adrenaline rush. Oh, no, it was I stepped on I, it, and there was a little pinch. I guess what I'm not, I'm not meaning pain as far as the feeling. What I'm meaning is the, oh, shit. Yeah, there's been a lot of damage. No, taken your brain doesn't they have time to do that. They remove that in their recounts yeah. of it. It's because not. It's not. I might be ampu. You know, my, like whenever I had that MRSA and they told me we might have to amputate your leg, I was like, oh fuck, and I yeah. was like, oh this this is over. You were a sentient being, right? At that moment, they're not. Right, but that's what I'm. You are. Is you are using your lower brain stem in those moments, right? If you know what I'm saying. The little 14-watt light so, bulb that can only power certain parts of the brain. So it's from the moment of action. Oh, yeah. The moment that it kicks off, you're you're running on that instinct, and you're running on them gross motor functions. Yeah. So survival mode. Yeah. So, I mean, I watched a guy. <laughs> I watched a guy during a rocket attack one time. No crap. We're taking rocket. <laughs> and I watch a guy take off running, grab his uh, his his IBA, his his uh, bulletproof IOTV, his outer tactical vest, whatever you want to call it, his bulletproof vest, grabs it as he's running by it. This is not an athletic man by any way. Should I mention this? He he's not a. I'm picturing. Overly, yeah, I'm picturing a couple of. He like grabs it as he's running, flings it up in the air. We're talking about how how much would you say an IOTV weighs with yeah, with heavy 30, plates in it? Thirty pounds. Yeah, side plates and all. Grabs it, flips it up. It opens up. He's still running. <laughs> it lands on his head. His head goes right through the head-sized hole. Boom. Hits him, and he continues running. Never checks up. And this is probably a man who couldn't make a paper ball in a basket at any other 30 time. minutes prior. Couldn't make from, yeah. from three feet across, just completely uncoordinated. And I, I mean, I watch it, and I stop. <laughs> Did you just do that? <laughs> I mean, just full sprint, knees coming up, boom, boom, boom. You know the uh, C RAM systems going off, shooting the UXO out of the sky. I want to use. I want to use names so bad. No, I'm, I can't. <laughs> I'll tell you after this who it was because you did know him. Word he came back me. with me afterwards. Oh. But uh, <laughs> my imagination. No, 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 no. But I mean, I'll tell you. But I mean, like, I was just like, blah. 
And it, watching things like that, I was like, that's when I kind of began to learn like the the inner animal, the inner animal, that inner, 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 that lizard brain, when it turns on, it's on. And there's nothing you can do about the it. The most I've ever seen from that is like someone grabbing a deer by the antlers and then it comes back to life. Yeah. And they yeah. go, oh, fuck. And then they try to kill it. <laughs> You don't remember him? Nope. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to ping your memory on him. He was there. Facebook, it is. <laughs> <laughs> if you see his face, you it might come up. I don't remember his first name. Interesting, isn't it? it? W- it's funny because I was right. He was an officer. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. But anyways, <laughs> um, yeah. So it's like I said, what I remember of those things is just no. Yeah. The about the most closest I've ever been to it is walking through Balcomville to go check on someone and then finding a overdose meth head out in the yard by the street. And your brain washes over and, and you I don't just, really remember everything that happened? Well, I just look oh, at dude. him. He doesn't remember him. Anyways. Okay. And I just look at him and I'm like, he's dead. And I'm like, oh, I should probably call someone. <laughs> <laughs> and it was just weird because I still don't really feel emotion on that. Even though this guy's dead and that would normally survival mode man. mess with most people, I just look at him and go, oh, this is a dead person. Yeah, PTSD isn't about being able to handle what happened. So much as it is about being able to comprehend the no, thing of what... I don't feel you, like it traumatized me. I don't... That's... There's a lot of the issues with PTSD is it didn't traumatize me. What keeps me up at night is what oh, is I that did. I don't feel this. Yeah. Honestly, that does bother me more than the event itself. You'll be surprised how many guys, when they're explaining PTSD to you, you realize, oh, it's not See, that they can't sleep with way. them. They can't sleep with what they did. Because that doesn't bother me. It's that they, it what should. they did. And, you know, thinking back on it, those were some really fun times in my life. I shot that guy, and it made me very happy. What the fuck is wrong with yeah, me? Yeah, months that later, kind of now I'm trying to sleep with myself at night. Because during it, soldiers sleep very well in wartime. They'll fall asleep on the ground, in a pit. Right? Oh, well, I mean, like, spoken for someone who hasn't gone to war. Like, I'm just saying. Yeah, it, we learn to sleep everywhere. And it's funny because I still carry that mindset with me whenever I am find myself with 30 increments or 30 minute increments of time and I'm like I have nothing to do right now. I have this this and this to finish today. 30 minute power nap. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I found it really interesting in that moment that the moment you started trying to explain a military experience you used the word increment. I well I mean I feel like I used that word when. I don't know. Yeah, go sleep with yourself in, at it night. It was bred into him with the I, drill. Yeah. yeah drill he don't mean to. Dead. He doesn't mean to. <laughs> <laughs> I know some big words. You're civilian now, Dylan. Well, not a civilian. <laughs> yeah. But I swear, yeah. I swear if I ever hear you use the word behoove, I'm going to cut you. He's used it. He has used it. I know. I've heard it. I know. Isn't it would like behoove a drill you. Sergeant thing? No. It's a NCO thing. Yeah. That it is. would behoove y'all. To do what I am telling you to, I'm not gonna make you do it. I they hate had, the they, army. For everybody listening, and, uh, I hate the army so it is much. Part of the vernacular, because I've met people that is that is their job, the drill, and they still use that in conversations at times. Sure, it's a well grew well. Hello, grew how was your day? And I'm just pathway. like, I don't my my uniform isn't on. What are you doing? Yeah, where it's Sonic. It's all about the brain, bruh. Once again, that little 14-watt bulb can only power so many parts of the brain at a time. And I mean that. We're ca- we're incredible of achieving amazing things you know, one you, thing at a you know, time. You know, oh, Never mind. I'm sorry. Go ahead. That's you, that's you Matt. I was, uh-huh. was going to ramble. Uh, uh, the one, the, <laughs> the career that really changes speech patterns, cops. Mm. Yes. Cops always, in my experience, they tend to have a very similar method. Of talking. This kind of authority. Mm-hmm. This. Shoulders postured. This even the body kind language. Of leaning forward a little bit. What? What are you doing? No. Nah, Smiling? Just, no. No. Just, Figure out who it is. Keep going. Yeah. Keep going. Okay. Continue. Anyways. This just method of, you know, what are you doing? Mm-hmm. 
I'm with you. My name's my name's Jim. It's just kind of this challenge sort of vernacular, huh? but they don't mean anything. They don't even understand they're doing it. Yeah, but it's just what they're they're. I think they're taught to do, to do that in the academy. Part of it is uh, that, and then the other part is the life experience, the constant being on you think edge. Think it behooves yeah. them. Well, no, I mean it's it it isn't. You it's not about the person they pull over for the traffic stop. It's the person, you know, three days earlier that they did have to tackle to the ground because they were high on some sort of drug. Yeah. And it it does. It leaves a little a little mental scar in how they needed to fix it. Well, they scenario. really don't know what their next traffic stop is going to turn into. Exactly. They have no idea. So, and you can't walk up to someone's window and be like, hey, ma'am, how are you today? I'm about to write you a ticket. Well, no, it's just like Throw if finger. you have that like super like shoulders relaxed, if you're calm, you're just in this. You've like, already lost. Yeah, he's going to pull the trigger quicker than you. Have you seen the video of the guy, the the police officer pulls up, he's got his window like halfway rolled down and the guy tells him, I've clocked you going 86 miles an hour. Uh, I need to see your license your registration. And... I can't remember what he's saying. It's just ridiculous. You need. Have you seen it? And the Mm-mm. cop ends up grabbing his window, and just yanks it. No. And just breaks it. And the breaks guy. It out. And the. And for some reason, the guy in the driver's seat yelling, "I do not consent! I do <laughs> not consent!" And he gets tased, and you hear him scream. But the cops warning him. Like, Don't tase me, bro. He's like, and then he's he's screaming like, um, no, he wasn't screaming that. But he's sitting there just screaming at him. I'm about to tase you. You are not complying. And it was just a speeding ticket. Mm-hmm. It's all it was. But he keeps saying, like, I don't have to show you identification. Is it illegal? Yes, it, he says, is it illegal to drive without a license? Yes. Yes, yes it is. And the cop goes, yes. Yes, it is. Think, Unless you're on your own personal property. Think, and he said, <laughs> and he's sitting there saying, I need to see your license registration. He, this guy's just being a dick. And he pulls out a, some weird paper on a binder and says, this means I don't have to listen to you or some shit like that. Hey, Matt, do you remember that class in school where they vividly went over all of our rights whenever we became of age and made sure we fully understood and comprehend everything that we're supposed to do in interactions with law enforcement? I was always on the ass end of those interactions with law enforcement at our school. No, well, I mean, what I'm saying is we, I I don't... You talking about your civics class? Yeah. Oh. Civics class was a joke and taught by a coach and there was no... Well, the coach that taught us, I really liked. He's a Marine. No, I mean nothing against him. I'm just saying. You know who I'm talking about. What you're saying is, on average, you feel that civics classes don't, don't do their no, aren't no. properly. Done. High school doesn't prepare you for think, life. Uh, I also think home ec. It doesn't. It does not is, prepare you for home life. Ec was pre- I, I took home ec in middle school, and I thought it was. Like, and you should have one in high school. Matter of fact, I did. Well, yeah, it was election. I had a family uh, economics election. class too. Is a uh, what is it? Elective. 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 Yeah, it was it's an election. While. <laughs> there was an election. Trump was, was in it. <laughs> Everybody voted for him as a joke, and what happened? <laughs> and somehow, and somehow, the Russians made him win. I'm still trying to wrap my head around. I understand. I see. We pulled okay, the WikiLeaks. So, <laughs> so no, no, no. Like what I don't understand is, uh, as a former Intel analyst, like I read the same piece of paper that every other news agency read. From the CIA, and I don't get the same meaning that they put out on it. I read the paper, and I realize that they're saying Russia leaked the papers to try to influence the election. I do not see in the paper it saying Russia did it, and there was some sort of grand conspiracy to undermine the U.S. elector. I don't think Trump just came up and went, hey, Putin. Got an idea for you. Nor do I think... I don't think Trump is the type that can be puppet mastered either. So have you seen... No, I'm the only one not. that, that doesn't not. like when I'm reading all these, I kind of chuckle, and his personality is a, a little too wild to... South Park hit it right on the head. Trump's just a troll. Yeah. yeah. He's a troll. That's He's what he is. He's a troll, and get over it. Yeah. But that doesn't mean he'll be a bad president. I don't think... By I'm, the way. I don't know. His first major move has me... Really excited. I hate him speaking. What, calling Taiwan? No. Or Taiwan calling him and answering the phone? Mad dog. Oh, the mad dog? Son, yeah. Secretary hey, of War. That, not just that. And I don't Because General he, Kelly, too. General Kelly is uh, uh, Director of uh, Homeland Security. 
See, I don't think people understand oh. the Mad Dog thing has been an like a a legend under the for table. yeah. It's been an under the table joke between military members for forever. What, forever. It's who they wanted it's forever. Like, <laughs> well, let, well, let's be honest about what the Secretary of Defense is. It's actually Secretary of War. Yeah, we just renamed. They the just title. named it so that it doesn't sound. When so did we mean. change that title? I think that was in two. Th- Look that up, Dylan. When did we change that title? I don't know. It was sometime recently. But it's really Secretary of War. And we sugarcoat it for, well, because not to offend people. Let's see. What what year was it? I'm finding out right now. Secretary of Defense title change. But it doesn't make sense to have someone that's not ever had any military experience or even shown interest in military tactics. Yeah. As a Secretary of War position. Let's see. And that's that 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 I mean, is always unlike bothered the fact me. that it was a physicist. Yeah. The last time. Yeah. What the hell? Or was a lawyer what? before? Yeah. There was, there, one of them was a physicist. You know. There was a lawyer. Yeah. What? Okay. Here we go. The history. I can't. I can't. I don't want you to tell me what I can legally do to them. <laughs> I want you to tell me what I should do to them. Yes. We now have a guy who. Uh, <laughs> the carries one. a book on him at all times. Do you know what that book is? Is it the Art of War? You no. Know, well, he is he is well read in the Art of War. The book he carries with him is Meditations. Oh. Yes. He's actually a very passionate and caring, or not, well, maybe not caring. We're going to say warrior monk, which is what people call him, the warrior monk. He he shows compassion for even his enemies. Yes. He really does. He he gives them a fair warning. He does not want to kill them. Please don't make me kill you. He doesn't want to. Yes. Absolutely not. He would rather avoid it peacefully. But if you fuck with him. Yes. And (laughs) there you go. That is the, he gives you the but. And I hate to say it, but uh, if you grew up only knowing strife in your lifetime, you know, if you grow up being, uh, what's her name, Kate on Fallout 4? Yeah. You know, the, the... Irish female whose mm-hmm. parents sold her into slavery and you know her backstory's terrible. She don't trust nobody, right? If if you're born into that, and by the way, billions of people on this planet are born and raised in that. You kind of have to talk to them that way in order for them to even understand. You know, uh going back to the cop speech, you know, uh, a very a guy that I very well respect both as a military officer and as a police officer, he's both. Once gave me a little speech about sometimes the reason you have to be so well versed in cussing and cursing is uh, one, there are some soldiers and some people that you will meet. That's the only type of language they understand due to no fault of their own. And it's not even a disrespect thing, it's only whenever you start talking to them in that syntax. In that lexicon, in those ways, does it even register in their brain? Because they're speaking English, it's a different type. And that's not anything to do with their education level. It's the environment and world they were raised in. And so, yes, whenever you look at a man and and say, and I plead with you with tears in my eyes, if you mess with me in any way, I'm going to kill you. That hits home for them. That, I don't know, just the way that comes across, it reminds me so much of Darth Vader with Luke, you know? Because <laughs> I just watched uh, The Empire Strikes Back the other night. Whenever he, goes, whenever he goes, don't make me destroy you. Yeah. It, it's Darth Vader, he didn't want to, he was pleading with Luke, hand outstretched. He, he did not want to do this, but he said, if I will, I must. Mm-hmm. Well, Gosh, that's, that's the a good reason, movie. That's the reason why he's lawful evil. We will help spectrum. you, but if you piss me off, Mm. Oh yeah, what was the other thing about uh for ten thousand years to come? How did he put that? Mm-mm, that um, one was things, evil, wasn't it? I don't know. <laughs> the things that we will do to them, they'll they say? will sing about for ten thousand years to come. Oh. I'm gonna put that. I'm gonna quote that. That sounds metal. Any, hey Matt, did you, did you get the, the uh, answer of when it changed? Yes, I was waiting on you. To... Oh yeah, what is it? When did it change? Uh, it didn't. The Department of War became the Department of the Army, which was then folded along with corresponding departments for the other branches into the Department of Defense. Yeah, what year? Uh, shit. 
Because that's just a fancy way of it saying it. It used to be it. that each branch was its own department, but its own cabinet-level security. After World War II, the entire security apparatus of the United States was reformed, and Congress created an overarching department, the Department of Defense, post-World War II. I think 1949 was something I saw in a separate article, but this one kind of explained it better. World War II was an interesting one because of all the superpower changes. All right, so Anyways, here we go. Back Here's the, the quote. Dog. We've backed off in good faith to try and give you a chance to straighten this problem out. But I am going to beg with you for a minute. So there you go. And, he, and it's pleading. a common theme that he pleads. He wants. He always pleads. Do not cross us. Because if you do, the survivals will write about what we do here for 10,000 years. And he's speaking, when he says things like this, he's typically speaking to tribal leaders. Because in the countries Iraq and Afghanistan and things like that. They operate the tribal on a warlord chief, tribal system. Yes, it's still it's a warlord very much system. In, in effect is a warlord system. The tribal chief has more power than the central government yeah. in those places. It's like the cartels in Brazil. Absolutely. And a great analogy, by the way. Um, and so when he speaks to these men, he speaks to men who came to power under money. And guns. And blood. Yeah. Money and blood. Blood money. Boom. So, I mean, and I'm not sure that people even understand <laughs> what's that. Uh, well, I mean, how old is that quote? It's a quote as old as time. If you separate your uh, scholars from your warriors. Then all your fighting will be done by cowards. No, then all your thinking will d- be done by cowards and your fighting done by fools. Oh. Occasionally, you need that guy who's both. He's both a warrior and an intellectual. Had it ass backwards over here. Yeah, you did. That's from Shame on sleep. you. And I mean, but that's like, uh, you know, that's an old philosophy. Whose quote was that? Still there? holds. It still holds. Not as old as time, though. Time's pretty old, bro. Time man-made. is a construct of man. Absolutely. Because we're starting <laughs> to think maybe, uh, because, well, what was it? The article's out this week, or was it last week about uh, we think uh, the speed of light may have actually slowed down? What? <laughs> How do you know f- that? What does that mean? Oh, because if time, if the speed of light is slowed down, then time has changed as we know it over time. Oh, fuck. Stop. Okay. No. Because oh, yeah. I tried reading an article on how they measure the progression of time mm-hmm. and what time really is. And they were trying to show it with mathematical equations. And I was up until five in the morning. This is. This and I had school in two hours. <laughs> it's one of the few arguments that. that Christian theologists, I guess that's who they are, would bring this up in terms of how old the world is whenever they disregard half-life as an aging scale, like I can actually agree with a little bit. Cause Science is a construct of man. I don't understand how people can... It's a philosophy of man. <laughs> Keep going. I don't understand how anyone can decide that something they learned over the past 20, 30, even 50 or 100 years could be so set that... So say the half life of this is a couple billion years. You have absolutely no idea. So that argument means two plus two does not equal four. It means that you have, or we don't know. You have two four. plus one plus x, and you're and, and, and you have four and you billion. have four on the other side of the equation on the equal sign, and so you think it's one. That's what really we're doing here. Right. We're trying to solve for x over and over and over again. And we have some pretty good theories. Just, I just shrug my shoulders and say, "All right, cool. I I understand your argument." Did you see the new rocket now. that uh, defies all laws of physics? Mm-mm. Yeah, I did. A I rocket? Did. Well, it's you need a to space watch ship. it. It's like some Matt Star Trek shit. Yeah, I don't even know. Are you talking about remember. the EM? You talking yes. about the yes, EM engine? Yes, the electromagnetic yes. waves, and they were sitting there because what it def- what it defies is uh, Newton's. Third law. Third law. Yes. Which is every action has to have an equal and opposite reaction. Yes, because this, this thing doesn't just, have that opposite yeah, reaction. Because it just it's just goes. bouncing cones around, yes. uh, bouncing uh, radiation around in a cone, and yet I've has thrust. I've been saying thrust. this for like a year and a half now. Whenever I thought of NASA, it. NASA, by the way, said it has thrust. A year and a half now, I've been saying Period. this. I think we have physics all wrong. I think all the laws are bullshit, and I think we still think the Earth is the center of the universe. Well, essentially. What I think... How much does this change everything? Everything. It changes the whole thing. The whole it, thing? Shows, it shows there are flaws and mm-hmm. there are no laws that are completely confirmed and we still need to well, further I mean, to That's prove. what it's from the very beginning because Newtonian physics works on the small scale. Right. But Einstein physics... Or no, no, backwards. 
Let's Einstein not get physics into... is small, and you know, Newtonian physics is the large bodies. But yet we've still never, never even been able to have a grand unification theory. String theory is pretty much completely disproven at this point. And yet we're still proving Einstein correct in certain things, like gravitational waves. Which they managed to measure. Finally. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah, but it only took like two lasers, each about a mile long. Yeah, and then they managed to see him, and they're like, oh. <laughs> there it is. Yeah. But we literally just had to wait for one to happen. They feel literally just set it up and just kept waiting and watching the screen. feel bad for all the guys that have been studying these wrong physics for, like, their entire life. It's not wrong. See, this isn't, this isn't a bad – this is, like, to me, I get fucking excited, and I'm like, oh, shit, we were wrong. This is awesome. Yeah, it's the best thing to ever happen. It really is. Well, I mean, just looking at it from, like, it my proves- very, very small scale, just in terms of, like, things like nutrition and whether or not icing is good for injuries, like, we don't these, know. these little overturns in knowledge that go completely against everything that we've been learning for the past hundred years – just sets people on fire. Like, people can't stand it. You get people so pissed off whenever you have new discoveries on whether or not this is good for you or whether but or not it's bad for you. Those are people... The, the the people that get offended or take offense to those things or practice those things are people that don't know how to remove themselves from pride. I mean, look. What was that thing about... uh? You know, Vincent Van Gogh, you know, they're starting to understand that he actually painted in the way that mathematics are just now beginning to explain the turbulence of light. I have no idea what the fuck like you're that. talking about. Okay, so in his later years... <laughs> Thank you, Matt, for just I usually, I usually embodying... have a clue, but now okay, I don't okay, know. So Hang on, everybody's wanna... seen the movie. Everybody's seen the painting, A Dark and, and Starry Night, Okay. Everybody's yes. seen that painting. Yes. Okay, I know what you're talking about. You know how know the, the way title. he paints the light yeah. and stuff in that? Where it's all like... Mm. Yeah. Okay, that was, in the later, okay. <laughs> that was in the later years after he had put himself in the crazy home. He put himself there. Mm. And uh, he painted it mathematically correctly to the turbulence of light. Something that we didn't figure out till about 40 years ago. That sounds like some sci-fi movie shit. Right? Correct. But there it is. A man in the middle of psychotic episodes would paint in ways that we can not detect with a normal eye. He would paint that way. Brock, can you spell game simulation? <laughs> <laughs> Last Thursday theory that it's all been here for only a few days. We're all inside of a simulation, and maybe that's why the physics can't be explained because they keep because the uh, game engine keeps throwing roadblocks. Yeah, keeps throwing roadblocks on us on physics. Can Wouldn't you spell that be cool? reality isn't real? I don't think so though. But here's what reality because really pain is. pain is my one objection to your idea of that. Right, the fact that that's a different you just pulled an arm hair. Yeah. The fact that that's a different kind of pain than the pain that I wake up with every morning in my knee, the little twinge I feel in my shoulder right before it rains. That's script. why. Why would we write that many different types of that pain? That script code is really good. I mean, why, <laughs> right? Why that many different types of pain? Why not a, just pain? What if we're just Brock? I don't quit, know. Quit acting like you're impressed at the at the amount of detail it would take. Whenever if I brought this phone back. 500 years ago, nobody would have the slightest You'd be idea. killed for witchcraft, you yeah, motherfucker. Witch- <laughs> right here. I can no, you wouldn't. The battery would die in a day, and no one would believe your little brick did anything. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you could charge it and hook well, it up to a windmill. Why so smooth? <laughs> I'm just saying, like, you can't argue, you can't argue semantics like I feel that like you whenever could make, there's I feel such like an exponential of a, growth constantly. I feel like off of a granary, you could actually make a charger. Yeah, but I wouldn't get any signal. Uh. Uh. You don't need signal. There's a lot of that. That thing in your hand has more computing power than computers whenever they went to space. Yeah, a fucking flashlight. That would blow their minds. What is this? Why does it have fire in it? It's not burning me. The physicists took digital pictures of the paintings and calculated the relative probability that two pixels at a certain distance are 
would have the same luminance. They also looked at wheat field with crows and road with cypress star, both from the same period with similar results. They found what scientists call a scaling law. When the same patterns are repeated at different spatial scales, other scales are also possible, such as time scales, scaling laws have a typical power associated with them, usually given by an integer or a fraction. Remarkably, Van Gogh's paintings from his own turbulent period show luminance with a similar scaling to that of the mathematical theory of turbulence. So, Crazy Man saw the world possibly correctly. How? Right? How did Albert Einstein do it? How did that little patent clerk one day driving down the road in his motorcycle go, what does the universe look like if I'm riding down the road at the speed of light on my motorcycle? Wouldn't it be dark? Right. He just literally... Or absent of light. Yeah, because I'm outrunning the light. Right. Boy, what about the time? That makes How long sense would I have to, to run on it? It makes sense to me that you that it would be dark. And but no time would one not did move. it before then. Someone explained to me, and this is something I've been curious about. Why and sound a little retarded. Why is it? And it might be completely false, but why is it that everyone says if you run around the world, or if you manage to fly around the world a certain amount of times, you go backwards in time? They're just why? using the time zone bullshit. No, 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 no not that. There's like Superman or the Are Flash. Are you talking about his? No. Yeah, if they well, go, see, the Flash fast goes enough, back in time. Yeah, if he runs fast enough backwards, they're basing that off quantum mechanics. Which yeah, the Flash is is based off quantum mechanics. Whenever you say Superman quantum flies mechanics, so fast he reverses time. No, no, no. It's whenever different. you say whenever you say quantum mechanics, like Flash going back, is that like ripping a hole in that's time? That's science that like before Einstein. Marvel is that Marvel mechanics or is that reality mechanics? That's no, because reality. he has to stand on. He has to do it on top of a. Uh, well, treadmill. Treadmill. A cosmic treadmill that they develop, and he has to run on it Isn't fast Isn't that enough. what it's based on is quantum mechanics? I'd have to look it all up, but, you know, that that's the problem. Well, quantum mechanics was disproven by Schrodinger, actually, was the original one. <laughs> where, <laughs> here's... Is that stupid cat dead or not? Yeah, here's what, here's what irritated me with quantum mechanics is... You start out... They did a logic bubble and, it, and a logic circle, and these pissed me off. Because I'm going to say my original statement. Uh, let's say that, that there's a kettlebell on the table. That kettlebell weighs 10 pounds in water. Yeah. That's my first, That's original statement. It weighs 10 pounds in water. Well, I go and explain a lot of reasoning. Well, it weighs 10 pounds in water because it's in water and it's a kettlebell and the weight of the water supports it up. So if you were to put a scale on the water under it, then it would weigh 10 pounds. But it only weighs 10 pounds whenever you observe it. And if you don't observe it, it could weigh 10 or 20 pounds. What? It's, that, it's that, that stupid. That sounds retarded. It's that stupid. And he, do you know what Schrodinger said? No. What Schrodinger said was there's a Geiger counter in a box with a cat in it. Correct. And if the Geiger counter hits a certain amount of weight, I mean hits a certain amount of radiation, then... The Geiger counter will release. Oh shit, Brock! Uh, he sent me the link to this Starry Night. Yeah, the, I, I just sent a hey, uh, TED Talk version of that. There's I don't a TED, watch Talk. TED Talk anymore. Well, but, just uh, watch this because it was a guy not invested in TED Talk. He was just a, a guest. Okay. But um, and it says, and the question is, is the cat alive or dead? Has there been enough radiation in the box to kill the cat? Well, according to quantum mechanics, by those Both. laws. It is alive and dead until you observe it. So that's if a tree falls, do you hear it? Or if a tree falls in the woods and no not one's around? Not quite. It's a little bit different because not it quite. is both alive and dead. It because, you, because one, you're looking at the box. That's the other part of this whole thing. All, all states of matter exist at, in... Wait. Matter exists in all states, at all times, everywhere, in time, until it is, it is observed at that moment. And this is why we built the LHC. The Large Haldron Collider. That way we can officially, finally smash things together, make them fall apart, and observe them. There's there's an issue with the logic bubble that, that Schrodinger created, but the one thing is is that it protected us from someone just coming up with a theory and then us the having to The only reason he made it. that exper- experiment was to say that you're, you've made this way too complicated. Mm-hmm. Is essentially what he did. He's like, I don't know. It was like what was going on in my women's history class 
and I'll tell y'all about that in a second because this pissed me off. Wait, wait. Say so you have a women's history. Yes, class? it's social science. Shut up. <laughs> but social uh, justice warrior. Oh, they, there's such an agenda in there. Finish your damn statement. Okay. What was I saying? <laughs> I'm being a terrible podcaster. We came full circle. Brock's I was going to cut you. Cut me. I was going to cut me, he says. Okay. You're getting cut. Yeah. <laughs> Don't cut me. Not even wasting the effort. No, Over you were mind. talking about what he did was you essentially oh, said. Oh, what he made- did was disprove quantum mechanics. He said, this is bullshit. You've all made it way too complicated. What do you mean that it exists in all states of matter at the same time? That's, That's what retarded. I'm saying. <laughs> That's retarded. And this is why. And he used that example to be like, so you're telling me this cat's alive and dead. And they, and they seriously looked at him and went, yes. Mm-hmm. That cat is alive and dead until you open it. And he's like, what? He never actually did the experiment. It was just a hypothetical situation. Yeah, hypothetical. Is that like you can't prove it? Oh, because you can't prove the cat was alive until you looked at it? Right. Yeah. Well, that's the, that's the... But they were saying it's alive and dead is fact. That's they weren't saying it's possible it can be it can be alive or dead. They're saying it is alive and dead. Maybe it's been so long since I've actually looked into like philosophy books, but it's like going back and trying to backtrack through the things I've read. It's like I feel like there's so much that's just bullshit that people are tripping over each other with. That's part of what happens. And then occasionally you get somebody that stands up and literally cuts a whole new swath into ways to think yeah um but they usually nowadays philosophy when created is usually created to stand something up or cut something down you know it's not really anymore it's a quote it's all a quote now a philosopher that really kind of impacted me and felt like it gave me a I can't talk from this side Mm -mm. no no No. it doesn't not at all really yeah right there it doesn't catch right there you go bud Wow, I learned a new thing about microphones. Yeah, whenever today. you whenever you get over here, it just kind of gets okay, loud. But then you walk over here and it gets louder. Okay, so you got to speak directly yeah. into the microphone. Yeah. That reverb was getting. You know the whole way of saying treat it like an ice cream cone. See, because now I'm hungry. Finish your goddamn thought. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Plato. I feel like Plato did that a lot for me. It felt like whenever, I mean, throughout the Republic and. And what was it? Was it Symposium? That was a really good one. Or is that? What was the one? Hey, the perfect situation. What was the one you sent me where they were talking about Ion? Okay, Ion was good. That, that's a and, very good example of what it, we were just talking like about. Those, because me and you were beating ourselves over the head with that. But and I, feel like those were, Brock. I feel like those were more of like new ways to think versus throwing something completely... Like you well, said, trying to first. chop something down or bring yeah, something Yeah, these guys up. are the first. So, for one thing, a lot of them are trying to answer, what's that little voice in my head? You hear that guy? You know, sometimes when you're trying not talking, answer, but there's the somebody conscious? else is talking. He sounds like me. Is that me? Hold on. Yeah, that's me. What is that? Wait, he's watching me. Well, then who's watching him? Who watches the watcher? Right. And then we're like, wait, am I my own deity? No, surely not. Surely there's something bigger. Because if he can watch me and I'm watching him, then what's the me that's watching him watch me? Mm-hmm. I need weed. Because then there's also things where I just do things sometimes without thinking. It's my Alan Watts. They're, they're just going crazy right now. I've, I've listened <laughs> to so many lectures on watching The Watcher and the cops chasing the criminal who keeps getting on the next story. When I ride my bike, I like to listen to Alan Watts. I go to sleep to his lectures. And I don't mean that in a disrespectful way. I still want to punch him in the face. Just to see what he'd say. Yep. I understand. What now? I completely, that's one of the few people that you could say, I want to punch him in the face. I go, I get it. Yeah. And it's not that Explain anger. that. No, explain it. Yeah. I mean. Why did that happen? Yeah. <laughs> now what? You didn't want that to happen. Why did that happen? Yeah. It wasn't in your, in 98% of philosophy, the reason that it breaks down for me, I love it, by the way. I love it. It's great. It's the greatest thing ever. <laughs> Sorry. We're talking about good philosophy. We're talking Big. about we're talking about the greatest, best philosophy Big there is. Philosophy. I'm a I'm a great it's, philosophical lover. There's no I one better. Really, there's no. I one don't know if they can me. tell by the by the by just the dialect look, and language look. that you're doing a Trump. Oh no, everybody knows the syntax of Trump. Well, the hand that China the hand, <laughs> <laughs> the hand gestures is what sold it. The little oak, the yeah. little okay, and then the 
dash hand, the knife dash hand, hand to the side. <laughs> it's going to be great. But the problem is, is <laughs> it always breaks down to we haven't complicated it enough with humans interacting with humans. Since day one of the Republic to Thomas Paine writing Utopia to the way political parties look at what they think the world should be now today. The problem is over and over and over and over, they think that they can get other people to fall in line with their thought. That's the problem with all philosophy. I, I See, I'm one of the people that are guilty. of. I get upset whenever I say, like, because, you know, people get mad at me whenever I say communism really could actually work. Absolutely. If we all agree, if we to were it. all on board, but just one mother, utopia to be in could power. work. Utopia could work. Absolutely, if we were all on board. Thomas Paine was very influential in writing your Constitution. Yeah, but that's what gets me is I can't say I don't think it would realistically work because of the nature of man right now. But I don't or think the it's nature impossible. of man for the next great while. I don't think it's impossible. I think we can evolve, and I think that that is possible. But in my lifetime, I don't think it'll happen. I like the word evolve. You know why? It has 8,000 different meanings. Because it does 8,000 different things. Right. What it symbolizes is 8,000 different things. Do you know there's Darwinian evolutionists? That's why we don't have webs between our fingers. Arguing with Darwinian evolutionist right now about yeah. what darwinian evolution is and you want to know what you want to know what <laughs> the real problem with that is it's probably both oh yeah in certain little situations it works one both. way and in certain situations it works another and in combinations thereof and then things outside of evolution as a total why do we have two nostrils right why do we have sinuses yeah if we're just going to get an upper respiratory infection anyway. Oh my gosh, that's that's. Why do I have every, toenails still? I wear at, shoes. At least once every four months, I'm asking that question. I really wish somebody would just go in and cut it all out. You like, can get surgery it. done for that very thing. How much? I don't know. I just know that surgery. Why does my knee not move in an om, uh, omnidirectional yeah. way? Right. Because it's not it only... supposed to, and you get pissed off Nothing. if it did. <laughs> no, would I? Would I? If my body structure changed to support an omnidirectional knee? I don't think you can handle it. Someone who's used to seeing joints a certain way, I, I, and someone who really doesn't like something that doesn't But if that's natural. how life always was for okay, me, Okay, no, 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 you me. said if suddenly. <laughs> no, he said why, isn't it? Yeah. Well, he posed He posed a uh, actual thought. Why? Yeah. Por qué? Mm. I mean... It's just the state of evolution. Like one day we might just we might eat, we might figure out how to like float around <laughs> telepathically. Why? Wow, because you telepathically. Use, because you only use ten percent of your brain. No, don't don't shut up. Uh, I, it, let me go ahead and bring. I probably already brought this up. If you think that's true, you need to do some research. No, if you if you think when you read that that by ten percent you mean you only have access to ten percent of the whole one hundred. Whenever I'm making the comments about the 14 watt bulb, it's in congruence with that 10% comment. The better way to look at it is you can only power 10% or a 10% part of your brain. So if I time. go out there and hold a power line, I'll get smarter. No, hang on, Brock. <laughs> hang on, hang on. Wait, that's not. You talk about the the. That watt firing only 10%. No, 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 no. I don't think that's correct either. Yes, it? it is. But doesn't, but don't parts of your brain work without like your conscious mind? Like, Wait. I mean, the parts of your brain that are circulating your blood, that are regulating your breathing. Well, they take up part of that 14 watts. What part, he's meaning is, really? what he's meaning yeah. is an overstimulation if all of your brain were to be functioning at once. If you I were, only have 14 watts to if power I were to be, your brain. But that's uh, enough to power Dylan, all of it. Could you could you imagine? But not all of it at once. Listen. There's no reason to power all of it at once. Because we can't. You. Now imagine. Imagine you trying to run a marathon on a skateboard. I'm not running if I'm on a skateboard. You're, this is, but this is the point. I you're just, like you're just doing be better just, on a just imagining. Just imagine doing a bunch of shit at once. Imagine doing... Like, what's that? Nothing. 
You'll read it later. Okay. Well, not. I mean. Oh, is that that article about parts of the brain falling asleep and waking up all the time? Dolphins. Well, humans do it too, by the way. Yeah, no, but it's what what I feel like the big misunderstanding in science fiction. You cannot is, jerk your dick, do a marathon, read, and do math at the same time. No. But you can do all those things. You can do all those things, just not at the same time. Yeah. Well, you lack efficiency. <laughs> <laughs> if you have 14 watts and okay so you have 14 no, no, watts no, no, can you power not, that refrigerator that oven that microwave that i'm just toaster, saying wherever it is if, i'm sure brock has one are you saying if suddenly if you had more power you'd be able to do all these things at once no is that is that what the argument is no because everybody believes you get superpowers no. he's saying he's saying that he's posing a question that maybe we could yeah, from, yeah. from what possible. from the way the brain works now, and from what we understand of it, it would maybe be possible. Mm. What but you saying is right now, with the way we're we're rigged, we cannot. And also, multitasking drains the brain quicker than one thing at a time. Yeah, well, there's no such thing as multitasking, though. Right, but the constant switching back and forth, yes, is multitasking from what we think we're doing. Yeah. I'm doing multiple things at once. Explain, no, you're not. You're that. switching one to the other. Explain switching one to the people. other. Explain that to people. Bob. Okay, so your ego, because that's essentially what's going on, has convinced you that you can do two things at once. What's really happening is your brain is jumping back and forth to these two tasks as quickly and fastly, and I'm using the word fastly, is as that possible. Word? It's one now. <laughs> okay in order to accomplish the mission. <clears throat> Studies now say doing that actually is a greater strain on the brain and will actually decrease the efficiency of your ability to perform a task within the day. By the end of the day, you're already way less efficient than you, inefficient than you were to begin with. If you talk on the phone while driving, I guarantee you're switching you, back I and guarantee forth really you, I guarantee you will you will not remember some of the drive or some of the conversation. Absolutely. Because you're flopping, you're you're flipping back and forth. Absolutely. What's the autopilot there? Like, I've always wondered that. Like the same reason I'm, why you can run and sometimes it's my, I think that's off. just muscle memory. Yeah. Like, whenever I'm driving and I suddenly just, just phase out and yeah, I that's skip just, three exits. Yeah, that's just running on a very instinctual almost. That's crazy. That's that lizard brain that's going all the way down. To and the you don't brain. remember it. And he knows he knows exactly what little spots to dodge. Because you drive. No, he just knows how to survive. You drive. You drive long distances a lot. Yeah. So I, I promise you, there, are t- like, probably a, like maybe whole states at a time. You just don't even fucking remember going yeah. through them. Well, I, not whole states, but like whole counties. Right, but there's like Texas. Spots. Texas is the biggest four states. Yes, most of West Texas, I usually just blur. Well, out. like if you were going from New York to somewhere, then you'd be like, "Well, I never remember going through Connecticut." Yeah. No, absolutely. I mean, it's just one of those. I can't things. wait to travel that way and realize how small states can be. <laughs> <laughs> the size what? of counties and parishes. Yeah. I want to go to Europe. Yeah. Because I could visit. Everything. I could visit every fucking country over there faster than I could all the states in America. Faster than you could all the counties in Texas. Why would I want to go to all the counties in Texas? I mean, There's only so much of Texas I would like to see. <laughs> I've seen all of it. <laughs> so I'd like to go to Dallas, Houston. Have you ever seen the... Uh, I watched a really interesting video the other day on how disfigured maps are and why that is. Mm-hmm. Alaska. I was I was really shocked. Yeah, some of it's racism. Africa. Well, no. Some of it's... No, some of it was yeah. racism. Some of it was the fact that you're trying to put a circle on a square. You could fit all the other continents. Well, almost. Yeah. Most of the world in on Africa. Africa. Well, no, what, what they finally came up with, and the reason being the way maps are the way they are, They're is hard as fuck that to draw. one point to another point is really closely equivalent to the globe as far as pinpointing the fastest direction to there. Mm -hmm. Airplanes still don't fly in a straight line. Mm -mm. No. And it's because we use maps, right? No, because we're on a circle. Jet stream, son. Yeah. (laughs) There's a lot of things. That weird wind pattern. If you can... Now, I can't remember. Which way does it flow? East to west or west to east? Mm. I think it's west to east. No? Maybe, maybe not. Don't know. Anyways, if you're going with it, your flight gets significantly shorter. Yeah. Significantly, like by hours. It's craziness. I know something about hours on a plane. And speaking of hours, I think we've ate up our hours. 
We're at one forty. We're at one forty. I'm 40. done with y'all. Nobody's even listening to us anymore. <laughs> yeah, they are. <laughs> no, they're not. People love the longer episodes. I've talked to them. Nobody's even gonna hear this. They like if, the longer if episodes. You, Dylan. If you hear this, you message me personally, and I might make a Twitter. No, you're gonna make a Twitter. <laughs> That's going to happen. You are going to make a Twitter. Your uh, social media presence is going to grow, son. It might. It will. It might not. I'm going to make you I only one. Have so I'm, not saying I that, I'm not you saying Twitter that you're going to you be don't. famous, but I'm going to say that you might have famous when they describe you. There might be an I in in front of it. Uh, Infamous. Go away. go away. Speaking of go away, go away to you, Brock. Go away to you, Matt. And if you're still listening, why are you still listening? You go away. Go All of bed. you. So here at Gorilla Banner Podcast, good evening, good night, go away. Say bye, Matt. Bye. Say bye, Dylan. Bye.